Okay, so we just finished uh, talking about cooties. Um, it's very important. And um, the girl gave me cooties. We'll call her Sal. And, um, you know, I mean, look, I mean, sometimes people give you cooties and you can't avoid it. But I feel like uh, I mean, that was pretty intentional. I mean, she came up to me. It was in the auditorium because, I mean, my elementary school was crap. But the one good thing about it, and he went there too. Actually, I have not seen that man since fourth grade. I just looked him up because he's important to me. Um, yeah, I mean, the one good thing about elementary school is they actually had a movie theater inside the elementary school that they let us watch during recess. And that's where the Cooley incident happened. We were going down the rows, and then she touched me, and then she said, I just gave you Cooley's, and you got to go give it to someone else. I mean, well, besides her, like, intentionally giving it to me, I got to go give it to someone else? Like, that's like those guys from the airplane saying there's always anonymous gay sex who spread AIDS to everyone. So, like, that was, she's like that guy if she was a third grade girl giving cooties. But anyway, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Cam Brand was mentioning that I recently emailed her. Um, I moved from the Bronx in um, fifth grade, sixth grade, I guess. And I haven't, I had seen her for the last um, six years, but you know, sometimes I would think about her, you know, because she was, you know, my girl next door. And um, actually, she, yeah, she pretty much lived like right next door to me, and like we'd wait at the bus stop together and stuff. You know, it's like a Taylor Swift song, you know, you <laughs> and me, we belong together, you know, like, it's a typical Thursday night, she's listening to the kind of music you don't like, she'll never get your humor like I do, we're on the bus, we're waiting for the school bus to come, it's raining hard and I know it's done, we'll get on that school bus someday, you, anyway. Taylor Swift, she's pretty good. See, it was not a Kate Perry song or a Keisha song. It was a Taylor Swift song. Not even a Hannah Montana song. Only Taylor Swift could express what me and Sal had. You know, Taylor Swift does a lot of those kind of songs. Like the boy, little boy she used to play in the pumpkin patch with his little girl. Her dad would joke, oh, you guys will get together someday. And they'd laugh. And then, you know, they end up marrying each other. So that, that's what it was like, you know. She was my Taylor Swift. Well, I was her Taylor Swift. I don't know. Look, the point is, um, so yeah, in, in high school, I was thinking about her a little bit. You know, everyone's getting ready for the prom and stuff. And I had not seen her for six years. And um, I just uh, popped an email to her. And very long email. Very long, so very long. It is huge. <laughs> yeah. Like an essay to her. Well, uh, like a project. Like what is this, 15 pages? Well, yeah. The thing about it is, I got to high school by plagiarizing all my essays. So when I had a love note, like the first place I went to was Spark Notes, because that's what I was used to doing. And I actually ended up plagiarizing a classic love letter to send to her instead of writing my own. Because, you know, I saw, yeah, well, it's not really sad, I think, that's, well, I guess, well, she, she didn't know, I mean, she could have Googled it, but back then, I guess Google wasn't as common, but, um, so, alright, the first response, she just said, oh, that was really sweet, that was really beautiful, like, she didn't get, the, like, she just pretends, after six years, I'm just mailing her poetry for no reason, like, she pretends, like, she doesn't get it, you know, like, and, and I contacted her, AIM, AIM was pretty back, big back then, AOL Instant Messenger, for some reason, it's been replaced by Facebook Chat, and Facebook Chat sucks, I don't know why Facebook Chat has replaced AIM, I mean, AIM had better technology in 1993 than Facebook has now. It just did. But, so I would talk with her on AIM, and I wanted to go to prom with her. And like, because that would be so cool going to prom with like your girl next door from kindergarten. So I kept like asking her, hey, do you drive? Do you want to calm down? You know, this and that. And like giving that. And like she would like, play stupid, like, oh, she, he's just telling me about this for no reason. Oh, he just thinks this is nice literature and wants me to enjoy reading poetry for some reason. So like, then, since my first email didn't get through her sick head, I made it pretty much more explicit in the second email. Like, 
Sal, I've always loved you since kindergarten. We gotta be together. You and me, we could be together. Don't you see? You belong with me. You and me. You know, like that, like a Taylor Swift guy saying, you know, like, I've always loved you too, the, the, Sal, and, and we should. You know, yeah, words can't express the passion I feel for you. Just, we should be together. And then, so then she replies to that, um, I don't know, I don't remember what her third reply was. But then I answered that back with another line stolen from the book, which I said, Have I bored you? I'm sorry. Have I annoyed you? I, you know, I just... I didn't want to waste your time, but I just wanted you to feel the ocean of my feeling or something. And then, this is the kicker. The third email was, oh, that was very sweet, but I don't think you know what love is. I haven't seen you since fifth grade. And like, I don't know what love is. Well, I got, I got a surprise for you, sister. That wasn't even written by me. That was the greatest love poem of all time. So you think the greatest love poet of all time doesn't know what love is. So, I mean, what's that about? The greatest love poet of all time doesn't know what love is? I mean, it's pretty weird to me. I don't know how you feel about it. I just, I was fascinated by that whole, you know, Oh yeah, he's actually letter. reading this letter on the cell phone. Letter. Any catch lines you want to shoot out? I mean, he, this, that's the actual like letter. pretty much center of book, basically. Yeah, well, it was, it was, a, it was a, like one third of the book. Yes, it wasn't the book. I mean, that, that would be an exaggeration, I think. If there did not exist someone who loved, the sun would become extinct. Well, that's true. I mean, without love, the sun would just explode from not being loved. So I, I think that's a very true line. And if that didn't melt her heart, then like she's a monster, right? I mean, that, you're being obvious, right? I mean, if that a line like that doesn't melt her heart, she's a monster. So there's nothing else to say about that. I love her so much, though. Anyway, so what else? Any other good lines? There's a, there's a lot of deep hearts, sage minds, take life as God has made it. Oh, that's beautiful. That, that, that's religion right there. Man. That, that's like poetry out of the Bible, you know. Like oh, joy of the birds. It's because they have nests that they sing. Oh, and that's good, right? Because if the birds didn't have the nests, you'd have nothing to sing for. What about this one? Does she still come to the Luxembourg? What is that? <laughs> oh, what in the novel? The go that was a garden they met a lot in. I guess it was pretty... <laughs> It was an important part of the story because oh, okay. she used to go to that garden a lot, then she stopped coming and like the, oh. that guy was real depressed about it. But I guess in our context, that didn't make much sense. Well, okay. that's what happens when you plagiarize, some stuff's going to be out of context. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I mean, in the novel, it really worked out great. Like, she was so moved by it. Like, there was, like, this pretty boy jock that, like, she was sort of going for. And she just, like, forgot about, like, that army dude and went for, like, the emo guy when she got that note. So, I mean, but the novel like, worked great. That was, like, five years ago, right? Um, yeah, this email was six years ago again. And then you just emailed her, like, last night. And that sends the Cameron. It was his suggestion that I not let this one get away. I mean, I used to wait for the bus with her in kindergarten. You can't let her sw slip away. So the funny thing is that the email was six years ago and you just replied to her now. It's going to be funny when she sees that. Well, yeah, I mean, well, the thing about Gmail is, like, it's on 